So. Oh, Gilbert's here. Three hours. Gilbert, come on in, but I got to take a break, dude. <laughs> Gilbert. Wonder what he's promoting yet another Caroline's appearance. I would imagine. Hmm. Does he travel on the road anymore? Does he just? Gilbert does whatever you want him to do. If you pay him. I don't know. I don't know if he uh, tours. What are you promoting this time? Come on. Get in here and plug. Yeah, because I enjoyed doing the show. <laughs> you cutting your hair short? You have hair. Why don't you grow it a little? Yeah, I know. One of the nice things on you is your hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know. What, you won't, you won't pay for a stylist? <laughs> I'm afraid I might actually look good for once in my life. Don't worry yeah, about I... that. <laughs> there he is, Gilbert Godfrey. I, I picture like in 10 years, Gilbert will kill some woman because... He's Why as not? weird as Phil Spector. It he's, seems to be the way to go. Because I know he's hiding behind the curtains somewhere in his apartment. Throwing around guns. Do you own a gun, Gilbert? Do I own curtains? <laughs> That's the question. I can see Gilbert, like, flipping out in ten years. You whore. You won't do me. Because he's angry at women. And... Right. He probably is holding guns to heads to get oral favors. Yeah. <laughs> I'll kill a Ronnie Spector. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's something up with me, Gilbert. We were talking about how weird Gilbert is. Like, who was it? Someone told me they saw you at Hollywood Squares. Gary. No, no, no. This was last night at the Comedy Central party. Oh, we got a report. You were at the Comedy Central yeah. party last night? <laughs> and you had a knapsack with you? Yeah. And at the end of the party, you went over to the food table and you stuffed stuff into your oh. knapsack? No, that that's... I, I didn't. I stuffed it in my mouth. No, no, no. What? You took stuff home in the knapsack, and no. I got it on real good authority. Yeah. From Gary. No, not <laughs> Gary, who did we hear that from? Chauncey, right? Chauncey. Yeah. In fact, Chauncey will be on the phone in a second. Chauncey said he sort of jamming food in there. Really, Gilbert? Really? No. Have you got the knapsack here? Yeah, yeah. You'd like to smell it? <laughs> yeah. Does it smell like no. mission hot dogs? Chauncey called He says he swore he saw you stick yeah. stuff in your knapsack. Yeah. Are you just too embarrassed to admit it? No, I didn't put any stuff. There'd be too many people for me to put stuff in there. Oh, like you care. I, I'm not saying I wouldn't do it. What'd they serve? Uh, oh, it did not nothing good. It would have been, ch it was like chicken wings. I see. Why I did you have a knapsack? I always carry that. <laughs> I don't know why. Because he doesn't carry a purse. Yeah. Chauncey. Hey, how, how's it going? Gilbert says you're lying. Oh, Gilbert. Tell the truth. Gilbert, where, were, where were you last night? I, I was at that party, yes. And what time did you get there? Mm, you, know it's, in... you know it's a good party of Gilbert's there. Yeah, yes. Oh, well, you yeah, know what it was? It was, it was a playlist. Gilbert I, I... got there. Well, Gilbert got there at the end of the party. And you would think by now Gilbert has some money. He's like an old man. He shuffles in with one of those backpacks on his back. Yeah, all right, that's cool. Yeah. And he goes, but he goes to each, there's like a long buffet. He takes food from every single tray, loads it up, and leaves. What does he what? load it into? Yes. The backpack. But How, what, I mean, you mean I just put <laughs> you chicken in? wings into a backpack? I, I watched the whole thing. Did, did I have a plastic bag with me? I just put it in Nap the backpack. Napkins, napkins. Oh, come on, John. In napkins. I, I viewed yeah, the whole that, thing. That's going to hold chicken wings. <laughs> we, we, watched, we watched in wonder. Were these napkins made out of plastic? <laughs> so, so Chauncey, are you sure you saw Gilbert put chicken wings in his knapsack? It was, it was, more, it was lasagna. It was ziti. How did you get that in a knapsack? It was fish, It was cheese. I, I, I don't think Gilbert. It. I don't think Gilbert would ruin his four dollar backpack. <laughs> But you can't even eat the food when it's all mushed up. Uh, all I know is I sat there and I was amazed by what I was saying. Say, I swear to God, I saw Gilbert put I food in there. I swear to God in heaven. Wow. But did Christ? To Christ? And to the, and to the, the Son of ended. God and how he died on the cross. The thing ended at 10 o'clock. Gilbert came in at like quarter to 10. All right. Well, <laughs> you know what? I guess there's a disagreement going on here. i got to take a break anyway. Thank you, Charlie. See, okay, I swear bye -bye. to the mother of Christ. <laughs> you saw Gilbert put lasagna in a nap And tuna fish. <laughs> Chauncey does have a weird reality. Yeah. He, I've been the victim of his, I swear to God, I saw you do something. And I poured some Coca-Cola in there. Yeah, because you needed something to drink with all that. Right. Mix the salad. Uh, Gilbert Garfield, tomorrow night at Caroline's. As I figured, in Manhattan, for ticket reservation, 212-757-4100. A rare appearance for Gilbert. Do you tour, Gilbert, or is it, uh, you have to come to New York to see you on stage? No, I go out of town. He's going to Jersey. Oh, oh yeah. Candy County College in Blackwood.
You're doing the college, huh? Ticketmaster.com. Oh, yeah, they love him there. The kids love him. Oh, the kids. Yeah, he, he makes a lot of very now references. I'm a big hit with the kids. Yeah. It's going to be some Phil Spector material. There you go. <laughs> How about those Ronettes? Do you ever change your act for colleges? Do you try to uh, be more contemporary? Oh, yeah, I wear a neighborhood jacket. <laughs> <laughs> and I talk about go go dancing. <laughs> You don't change your act for anybody. No. No. How, how long has it been since you changed your act? Oh. Who was that Hitler routine? I still do Spiro Agnew. Do you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> if the kids can't get Ralph yeah. Cramden and Casablanca, screw them. Gilbert does an excellent Ghostbusters routine. Yes. <laughs> screw these kids. And I still have my catchphrases like, here comes the judge. <laughs> but does the college know how dirty you work? You do work blue. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's right. No, I mean, you, you, you even use the C word for a woman's <laughs> private parts right on stage. And they, he doesn't like the yeah, audience. I did that during... Um, the Go-Go's. Yeah, the Go-Go's. <laughs> you opened up for the Go-Go's and all the teenage girls got to hear the C yeah, word. because they warned me. They said there's going to be kids and their parents in the audience. <laughs> that's all you have to do. All right, look, we have to take a break. And, Who's weirder, uh, Gilbert or Michael Jackson? Michael Jackson. <laughs> You're sure? I that's think so. I don't think Gilbert sleeps with kids. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he talks about Hello, it. Although, Michael Jackson never put a ravioli in his knapsack before. <laughs> I'm putting a ravioli in my knapsack. Rick Johnson, the police are searching my knapsack for ravioli. I was humiliated as the police emptied my knapsack. <laughs> they searched my rectum and knapsack for ravioli. <laughs> <laughs> they spread my buttocks cheeks, searching for ravioli and chicken wings. <laughs> I found ricotta cheese in my wallet. <laughs> Sleep with me, ravioli. Oh, we're going to take a break. We're going to take a break. You're a very funny guy, but everyone needs a break from you. Yeah. <laughs> no one can take too much Gilbert. Yeah, you have to meet it out. A little bit of Gilbert is good. Um, we're going to uh, take a break. Gilbert to come back with us. We're going to do a little news for you. And you know who's calling in, Abe Hirschfield. Is that right again? Swear to God. He's out of jail, right? He's out of jail. You have something he wants to oh, say. Oh, that's great. Gilbert loves to talk to Abe. You love when Abe calls him. Yes. Yeah. We'll be back right after these words. Well, are you ready for a new movie about the Clinton crisis? Entertainment Weekly magazine is. They're calling it Intern Gate the Movie, and they've cast the fictitious film. How about James Brolin as Bill Clinton? Barbara Streisand as the First Lady, as Monica Lewinsky, EW suggests Shannon Doherty, and in a brilliant piece of casting, Howard Stern as Paula Jones. You're listening to a man who doesn't care about the rainforest, but would love to see Sting's nude. Yeah. <laughs> All right. On our phone is a very distinguished gentleman, uh, Mr. Abe Hirschfield, who actually had to go to prison for a while. Why Why did he go to prison? For, for Didn't he try to rub somebody out or something? Didn't he try to kill his business partner? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, Mr. Hirschfeld is out of jail now. You're out of jail, Mr. Hirschfeld? Yes, sir. All right. Did you kill your partner? Well, my partner died before they started. Before you could kill him? Against me. I see. So before he could, <laughs> you could kill him? Before you could kill him, he died on you. So it's bad right. timing. So why they, do they... Why so they, do they, uh, so they arrested me for a second killing. Why do they arrest someone for killing someone if, they, if you don't get a chance to kill them? It's wrong to even plot. Why? Because the courts in New York are so crooked, <laughs> so corrupt, so lying. I see. That is unbelievable. I can't believe they lock people up for murder. <laughs> <laughs> but you didn't, wrong. But you claim you didn't do it, right? No, I never intended to and I never thought of it. But, right. you know, <laughs> well, what was the today evidence? we have bigger problems. We do? And I think... I would like to discuss two of the first major problems out of the most How old a guy are you? I sent you. A answer me a, my questions so first. How old are you? I am 84. And Why feel, are you worth over... I feel like I'm 84 and feel now better than when I was 21 because I lost 50 pounds a diet that I invented. You can eat as much <laughs> as you want. No pills, no exercise, and you lose as much as you want. Don't look at yourself in the mirror. Right. And then you're uh, Tell you weighing 19 By the way, pounds. Mr. Hirschfeld, I know you're a big supporter of Israel. You're a Jewish man. We have a top Jew here, too. Uh, he is, he's a rabbi, right. and he would like to offer a blessing before we speak. Okay. 
I could think of right. offhand. So, so, yeah, so Mr. Hirschfeld, here's my question: What do you? You're worth like a billion dollars, right? Well, I anybody that has to count how much he's worth has nothing. All right, but you're a very wealthy man. And yes, I my have question many, is, many millions. I know you. You every. I see you all over the place discussing plans to build the World Trade Center. You have a. You have a diet you invented. You. Uh, what have is? A, how did he lose 50 pounds eating anything he wanted? But, but the point is, why not just rest and relax? Well, you know, I know when I rest. I rest when I in in my grave. But until then, I like to do good things for the public. I will rise from my grave and yeah. turn into a bed. So let me tell you. I will drink the blood with the living. Yeah. So now I me... can only be killed with a stake in the heart. Yeah. I am one of the undead who rises from my coffin every night. And then I turn into a bat or a wolf. Right. Sometimes I'll turn into a wolf. And yeah, then but... I will bite on the necks okay, so that so I'll you... drink the blood with a living. All right. Yes, we should. Yes, so, you see, let me start. Let me start with the first problem. The first problem is... Is the, the sunlight devotions. can destroy the undead. Okay. And the sunlight... Right, what is the first problem you want to tackle? I want to say... I want, the first problem is to stop the many divorces that we have now, and I'll tell you why. Are you a divorced man? No, I'm 60 years married, only because my... Because I my couldn't day, kill my, <laughs> only Did you try to kill her? I tried killing my wife several occasions, didn't work out, so I, so I you, remain married. So I will tell you how to have a good, happy marriage. All right. You know, this 10-year-old boy says to his mother, how old are you? And she says it's not polite to ask a lady her age. Next day he says, how much do you weigh? And she says it's not polite to ask. Next day he says, why are you divorced? And she says, you're too young, you'll get older, we'll discuss it. A few days later, the boys are together, and he says, boys, I found my mother's driver's license, and it gives me all the answers. It says that she's, that she's 35 years old, she weighs 120 pounds, and in sex, she got an S. And that's the main cause of all divorce. How old was the boy? <laughs> the old boy was 10 years old. He's 10, and how old is his friend? You know, the, the these... friends were the same age. Wait a second. The, the mics aren't working at all here. Can you just do that again? Yes. Yeah. The 10-year-old boy is asking his mother, how old are you? And she says, it's not polite to ask. Next day, he says, how much do you weigh? And she says, also, it's not polite to ask. Next day, he says, why are you too How many times can you get him to say this? He says, you're too young. You'll get older. We'll discuss it. A few days later, the boys are together. And he says, boys, I found my mother's driver's license. And it gives me all the answers. It says that she's 35 years old. She weighs 120 pounds. And in fact, she got an F. And that is a major issue in marriages. When the wife has a well, I'm going to ask you, but I don't understand. Yeah, wait, 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 let me... God, if you have a good night... And you can tell me screwed up, but I'm going to you have answer. a good night, then you have a good day. But... If you have a bad day and then a good night, everything straightens but out. But how old was the mother? The mother was 35 years old. That part and got she weighed 120 pounds. Yeah, that part got edited out. Right. 
See, and you I, know the other most important no, issue. No, wait, wait, Abe. They, I, I don't know what the hell is wrong with the, how they're recording stuff here, but I, I, we didn't get any of that. Oh, you wanted the game? Yes, okay. yeah, please. The joke. Yes, yeah. okay. the joke. Yes. You know this ten-year-old. This ten-year-old boy says to his mother, "How old are you?" And she says, "It's not polite to ask the lady her age." And he says, "How much do you weigh?" And she says the same. It's not polite to ask. Next day he says, "Mother, why are you divorced?" And she says, "You see, young, we get older, we discuss it. A few days later, the boys are together." I've found my mother's driver's license and it gives me all the answers. It says that she's 35 years old, she weighs 120 pounds, and in fact, she's asking for money like, like, like those little biddies who are the five And the women who have in sex an A or a B, they never get the How this guy be a multi millionaire? He obviously didn't make it yet. So, that, that is one of the issues, but the other major issue that <laughs> He's bothers <gonna> <laughs> our nation and more than anything... Do you want to make him do it again? Yeah. Well, wait, 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 wait. opened a butcher shop, more butcher shops, then he bought a slaughterhouse, yeah. more slaughterhouse. I, I want to know what the hell is going on here. Why didn't we hear any of that? Well, Why I'm sorry, Abe, Abe, if, Abe if I'm yelling at people here. If you're not finished, you're yeah, here. No, we didn't hear any of that story. No, no story that you hear from me, you help from anybody. No, no, I could you tell us, we want to hear the story, and the mics keep going in and out. It's our new producer. Yeah. So what happened? Could you just tell the story about the boy and, and the woman? Again? Yes, please. Yes, this 10-year-old boy... Asks his mother, how old are you? And she says, it's not polite to ask a lady her age. Next day, he says, how much do you weigh? And she gives the same answer. And the next day, he says, why are you divorced? And she says, you're too young, you'll get older, and we'll discuss it. A few days later, the boys are together, and he says, boys, I found my mother's driver's license, and it gives me all the answers. She says that she's 35 years old. She weighs 120 pounds. And in sex, I don't get it. She got an F. No, an F and in with, sex. Uh, with an F in sex, they automatically get divorced. But those women I'm gonna who go are the, I'm gonna, an A or B in sex, I want to break they down the joke. forever. It kind of grows on you. Yeah. So now it's the other issue which which bothers us a lot. You um you wrote that joke. I made up every joke that Fabulous. you hear. You never I didn't have hear it unless you hear it from me, and I have hundreds of them. You know, uh, is the mother divorced? <laughs> yes, <laughs> because she has in sex an F. An F. Oh, but so. doesn't he realize that's female? I beg your pardon. B B F isn't that for female? Yeah, yeah it's for female. I that's see. Right. I see. I you see. Can only you can only get an M or an F. Yeah. So what if she'd gotten an M? She'd be a man. If she got that, she would be a man. man. Yeah. I, I, that, I, I, that I didn't think of. Abe, I think the main problem here is we didn't hear all of the joke. That's why we're so confused. We get the first half, yeah. and then we don't get the second half. We started going in and out. I think we've got it fixed now. It's the submixer. And so, uh, should I repeat yes, it? Yes, please. One more time, please. Okay. This the, this the ten year old boy <laughs> asks his mother how old are you? I can't take it. And she says it's not polite to ask a lady her age. <laughs> Next day he says, How much do you weigh? And she says the same thing, it's not polite to ask. Next day he uh, says, Mother, why are you divorced? And I'd love to meet this guy. Young. You realize this guy used to go to dinners with, like, Robert Kennedy. And, you know, really? Yeah. Um, now he's being dicked around by Gilbert. Yeah. <laughs> Robert Kennedy's there going, could you uh, tell me the uh, joke again? <laughs> and, uh, hey, you're such a great storyteller. Can you tell the one about the 10-year-old boy? Well, Mr. Kennedy, I, uh, I lay up gloriously when I hear your joke. <laughs> Wait, and now you see the other issue is a much more interesting I one. We missed the, the end. end of it so oh, I'm sorry, we missed the end. Open the butcher end. shop in uh, Chicago and more butcher Hey, shops. just the last two lines of the joke. We missed the end. Which line? The last two. From the previous joke? Yes. 
the, yes, the yes, previous. Yes. She's 25 years old. Yes. She weighs 120 pounds. 120. And in fact, she got an F. No, not that line. The line before. The line before that? Yes. The okay. previous line to that and then do the rest. Okay. All right. Yeah, like, what was the third question? Right. right. From the third question forward. It seems that you guys don't know what means in sex and F. <laughs> but unfortunately today that's what's happening a lot. We're happening with him. So uh, the, the first line is the boy is asking his mother, how old are you? And she says, it's not polite to ask a lady her age. So how does it start then off? Then he says, mother, how much do you weigh? And she but says, also, Abe? it's not polite to ask. How does the joke start off? The joke started yeah. off. That's a wonderful question. The yeah. joke started off when I was in jail. No, no. How does and the there joke... many, many... I, we want to record it this time. Right. Could you say it? What should I say? Well, we want the joke again, but this time we want to record it, and we'll play it in a future show. Okay. Yes. You know, this uh, this 10-year-old boy <laughs> asked his mother, how old are you? And Why did you do that? And not polite to ask the lady her age. <laughs> Next day, she says, Mother, how much do you weigh? And she also says, It's not polite to ask the lady her weight. Next day, he says, And why are you divorced, Mother? And she says, You're too young. You'll get old of it. Why is he calling in anyway? Do we ever find out? They say to the boys out there. I want to move ahead. He's doing his age. And it gives me all the answers. I wish the boy was dead. <laughs> that she's 35 well, years old. It. It she weighs 120 not. pounds. <laughs> and in fact, she got an ass. <laughs> so that's natural that it leads to a divorce. Well, <laughs> Mr. Hirschfeld, a lot of people love the joke. In fact, uh, here's Nancy. She loves it. Nancy, go ahead. I can't remember when I laughed so hard. Do you I hear that? Tears. I am in tears. <laughs> Mr. Hirschfeld, you, know you, you, you people are so at the top of your game. Well, Mr. Okay. Hirschfeld, not even funny. We can't take credit for <laughs> that's Mr. Hirschfeld. Yeah, he great that beautiful yeah, joke. Gilbert, you know, good go, but no, these <laughs> people. <laughs> By the way, you know Barbara Walters interview. Barbara Walters. Yes, go ahead, please. Baba Volta. Baba Volta. Baba Volta. President Clinton. <laughs> Baba Volta. Yeah, Baba yeah. Volta. Who is this? You know who she is. Who, what's her name? Barbara Walters. <laughs> <laughs> Baba Volters? Right. You know, I don't. Uh, who is she? You know, never mind she's that. on every television show. Mr. And what, show. What's her name? Barbara Walters. <laughs> She said she asked the president, she had an interview with Is president she on like something, uh, Everyone Loves Raymond? What show is she on? Okay. So she interviewed President Clinton. <laughs> and she Who? said, Miss President Clinton. Who interviewed him? Barbara <laughs> Walters. <laughs> <laughs> and she interviewed Clint Howard? No, President <laughs> Clinton. <laughs> You know, uh, you know. <laughs> she interviewed Bobby Vinton? No, President Clinton. <laughs> Who interviewed him? Barbara Walters interviewed President Clinton. Bobby Waters? Yeah. Yeah, Bobby Waters? Okay. <laughs> what? Who interviewed, <laughs> Who interviewed <laughs> Harry, Harry Dean Stanton? <laughs> No, Barbara Walters. Barbara Walters interviewed who? Yeah. President Clinton. <laughs> Clemens? Mr. President. <laughs> How old are you? And she says, Mr. President. And wait, they wait, what, 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 what? Mr. Mr. Her who? Mr. President Clinton. <laughs> Is this a joke? Yes. Oh, and, uh, start so over. she and start she over and tell the whole joke. Okay. They talk. Uh, they start talk over. About, Abe. Yes. Who, who? First of all, who was doing the interview? <laughs> Barbara. Ba Barbara Walters. You like my accent? Yeah. No. I let's uh, do the joke about Barbara Walters. And she interviewed him, and she said she was interviewing a ten-year-old. 
<laughs> no, come on. Let's get the jokes because I want to get it on tape. Go ahead. So, should they continue? So, wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. We need silence before you start. Said, and they spoke about wait, the old wait, 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 so on. Then she says, Mr. President, we were told Mr. by Paula Jones. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait. She was interviewing Elvis Presley? Abe. Yeah. So she, you said Mr. Presley. So she, Barbara Walters was interviewing Elvis Presley? No, no, President Clinton. <laughs> Who was interviewing President Clinton? Barbara. Oh was it Barbara Wa Waters? Yeah. Bobby Waters. Barbara Waters. Okay, let's just be Bobby Waters. Okay. All right, listen, what is it, Mr. Mr. Hirschfeld? Yeah. You say you have a diet that will change the world. You right. also say you have a plan for rebuilding the World Trade Center. Right. Well, I know it's Barbara Walters looks thinner. <laughs> yes. So, anyway. Right, why don't we do this? Okay. We've got the two jokes on tape. Mm -hmm. But the second one you don't have. We never finished the second joke. We never finished it. It's only one more oh, minute. Oh, okay, yes. Start, start from the beginning. Let me finish. Go ahead. So, so the president, <laughs> and they spoke about the world. Then we'll get him to the afterwards. <laughs> And then she they said, Mr. They President, about you were told by Paula Jones <laughs> that you have a very, very small penis. <laughs> and the president says, honey, honey, believe me, it's only because she has a very, very big mouth. <laughs> All right, look, i got, I got to wrap up mouth? this segment. Um, Mr. We're out Hirschman, of time. We're out of time. I can give you the, the, by the way, of the best jokes that were never told because all these jokes I composed in the two years. I, I like I the one joke. about the 10-year-old boy. But let me tell you something. The, yeah. I like the one about the 10-year-old boy, but the thing about Bill Clinton was he was not into peanuts. That was Jimmy Carter. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. Jimmy Carter I knew personally, but I didn't He had see peanuts. Him. I didn't and see And why peanuts. would Bobby Vinton? Be interviewing Clinton. Yeah, Bobby Vinton was a singer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Isn't the wit Clinton dead? <laughs> All right, look, Mr. Hirschfeld. Yeah. You can call me Abe or whatever. No, I, out of respect. I have respect for all the people. <laughs> Let me uh, say thank you, number one, for the yeah. interview. Number and two. number two, we want to hear the joke about the 10 year old boy. Uh, again? Yes, yes please. please. I tell you what, from now on, I'm going to charge for it. <laughs> <laughs> the ten-year-old boy says, "Mother, how old are you?" And she says, "It's not polite to ask a lady her age." Next day, he says, "How much do you weigh?" And she says the same thing. It's not polite to ask a lady her her weight. <laughs> Next day, he says, "Mother, why are you divorced?" And she says, "Son," and she says, "Son, you're too young. You'll get older. We'll discuss it." A few days later, the boys are together, and he says, Boys, I found my mother's driver's license, and it gives me... You should have Dracula Godfrey interview him about his plans for the World Trade Center. 35 years old, she weighs 120 pounds, and in sex, she got an S. Sometimes... Hey, um, Dracula Godfrey, I know you want to know about uh, Mr. Hirschfeld's plans for the World Trade Center. Go ahead. My plan about you see as a builder. Your plans for the World Trade Center. Right. Tell me now how you plan on building the World Trade Center. The World Trade Center. <laughs> you know what you remind me the way Joey Adams introduced me when he roasted me. <laughs> Joey Adam roasted me at the Friars Club. How's he doing? How is wait, wait, How we want to get a joke. How is Joey Adams? And he said, I want you to meet a good friend of mine, Abe Hirschfeld, who is in this country maybe 50 years, but he still speaks like he's arriving next Thursday. That's wait, good. Wait, what was this joke again? I can't hear a thing on these new mics. <laughs> So maybe I should buy you old mic. Yeah, yeah. Good. All right, Mr. Hirschfeld, listen. That's Dracula Godfrey. It's the um, same thing. An old penis and a good one is better than a new one and a bad one. Well, Mr. Hirschfeld, true. I am... Is that a joke? I don't know. Mr. I don't know what it is. It's you are, you are, you are a, Mr. Hirschfeld, you are a huge success. 
<laughs> you have made, uh, even though you went to jail, you still have your millions. And yes. your sense of humor. And your sense of humor. You're a good sport. But and I had have, I have such fantastic jokes. If you what let was that Joey Adams one? If you let me tell them, you'll be the ten times bigger at the station than it is now. Well, thank you. Thank you. Hey, Mr. Hirschfeld. Yes. Uh, at a future date, I'd like to hear your plans for the World Trade Center and also your plans for a diet. Diet, yeah. Thank you. Okay. All right, Mr. Hirschfeld. And uh, anything you're plugging? Do you need to plug something? Yes. Go ahead. I need to plug the problem what faces the nation. It's I'll, the world's problem. I'll be there all week. <laughs> Buy tickets now. <laughs> What is the world's problem? I'll be working this weekend at the World Trade Center. <laughs> Please, Mr. Hirschfeld, quickly tell us what is the world's problem. There's a lunatic in my studio. The world's problem is, the world's problem is that uh, this butcher opened the butcher shop. And, oh, no. and oh, listen, and I got to go. He bought slaughterhouses and became immensely wealthy. And his son graduate in, in, in Harvard as the highest scholar. And when he came home, he says, Dad, I don't know what to do. I graduated, I graduated Harvard. I don't know what to do. So Dad says, why don't you join me in my business? So he shows him all his businesses. Then he shows him a machine. He says, this is a machine that nobody has on the Wii. I got to get out of We put the cow at one end, and the machine kills the cow, and it separates right, the parts right, okay. and everything, and it packs it in packages, and whatever. What is going on? I don't know. I want to go home. Come out on the other side. All right. He says, Dad, if you had a machine where we put in a sausage on one side, and a cow comes out on the other side, you got yourself a partner. There you and go. that said, we have a machine like this too. He says, really, where is it? He says, son, your mother at home. All right. Mr. Uh, Hirschfeld, thank you, and we hope to speak to you in the future. Thank you. Very good, and I'm looking forward. Bye-bye. God to everybody. Thank you. Thank Mr. You. Abe Hirschfeld, everyone. I will be at Captain's Funnies all this <laughs> week in New Jersey. Let me tell you. <laughs> There's a guy who does a couple of jokes. <laughs> wow. Right. 500. Gilbert Godfrey tomorrow night at Caroline's in Manhattan for ticket reservations. 212-757-4100. And Gilbert will be at the Camden County College in Blackwood, New Jersey on February 28th. For tickets, go to Ticketmaster.com. i got to take a break, and then we do the news. Gilbert uh, Godfrey is here uh, live from the Hollywood Square. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know the first line out of Gilbert's mouth tomorrow at Caroline's is going to be, So there's this 10-year-old boy. <laughs> You're still Mr. Hirschfeld's joke. I know you. he got a wealth of material. Tonight on E, Stump the Bowie. Bowie wins, and his opponent's sister has to get naked. It's a sexy new twist to name that tune. Plus, bonus footage of a hot Playboy photo shoot with our own Artie as the photographer. Don't miss this. A jam-packed episode tonight on the E. And now, right after these words, the news. Stuttering John with Sean Lennon. Hi, Sean. How are you? Good. Look at Howard's son. What? What do you think of Howard Stern? What do I think of him? Yeah. Uh, I don't think too much, you know. You watch the show? No, well, I don't watch too much TV. You no, know, I don't watch too much TV. Do you listen to the show? Um, I don't listen to radio. Howard. Yeah. How are you? How are you? Let's make you feel at home. Kids, follow me. Thank you. All right, you know, um, the guy who sued Leona Helmsley got $11 million claims to be on the phone. I don't even know if it's the real guy. Are you the real dude? Hey, Howard. It's not him. Nah. <laughs> Tough guy fag. Sound like dice. Yeah. Hey, Howard, I'm a fag. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like dice over here. What is it, Bob? Yeah. This is Bob. I was watching CNN on TV. Yeah. Yeah. Leon Hemsley that was reported to have to pay $11.2 million. <laughs> <laughs> to some faggot. All right, let's uh, do the news, Robin. It's time right. for you. What is this guy's point? Is he... I don't know. I don't care. <laughs> I can't even hear him. Gilbert's laughing so loud. <laughs> hey, Gilbert at uh, Caroline's Manhattan. 
Uh, for tickets, 212-757-4100. I know some people flying in from out of town for this show. <laughs> <laughs> All of New York's hotels are jammed. Yeah. yeah. So try and get tickets quick. They're closing off certain streets. <laughs> people are riding bikes to the show. How many seats are left in Camden at that college? <laughs> well, you can't get there either. Camden County College. In They're Blackwood. already lining up. <laughs> you know, I forgot about Camden. <laughs> yeah. You're going to play the college? How many seats? I have no idea. No idea. You no. just go. Yeah. Flat fee you get? Yeah. Doesn't matter who goes. Yeah. Right. Who books these things for you? Do you do this yourself or oh, do you no. have someone? No. no. Yeah. You wouldn't pay an agent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have to give a whole 10%. <laughs> no, you're smart. You're beating the system. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. He pockets the whole thing. Right. Uh, Robin, go ahead. All right. Back. Thank you. <laughs> Over like I'm singing. Yes, I'm convinced you are. <laughs> she is. She's dancing on a table. <laughs> All right, Robin, let's hear it. She's wearing a banana skirt. <laughs> dancing on a table. <laughs> Just call me Josephine. Yes. Um... I've never had any reason or seen any reason to go into a chat room, but this might have been one that I wanted to sit in on. An Arizona man took an overdose of prescription drugs last month while online in an Internet chat room. Yes, and people cheered him on. Those who were chatting with him watched as his webcam recorded him passing out. The Arizona Republic, the newspaper, is reporting that some of them actually encouraged the guy to take more pills. Because nobody thinks he's for real. Others urged him to get help. However, no one was able to get uh, help for him because he had given a fake number when he signed into the chat room. They didn't know where he was. Right. So they watched, taunted, or tried to help him. Yeah, it's all their fault. Uh, while he was doing it. The family is outraged because I guess oh. they've seen footage of what was recorded. Right. And some of the comments that were made while this guy was dying online. Could you sing that song again? <laughs> <laughs> Who do you think I am, Abe? Bruce Bell? <laughs> See, he wants to record it. <laughs> I certainly... Something was wrong with the tape. <laughs> go, Robin, go! Uh. <laughs> uh, a merciful ending was announced for <laughs> Dawson's Creek. I had it's stopped watching it. Unwatchable. It's yeah. absolutely unwatchable. It was so good before. It was. Yeah. It started <laughs> out Gilbert so was, good. It yes. was a big fan. <laughs> wow, it was a brilliant show. Well, I happened to have watched it yeah. in the beginning, and I wised up. They're uh, actually going to have a two-hour finale, but who cares? No one. It's wrapped up, believe us. Gilbert Gar Godfrey's girlfriend's a big fan. So. <laughs> She'll be watching the two-hour yeah. show. It's either that or look at Gilbert. <laughs> <laughs> two hours. One of those dudes that was kicked off the Bachelorette has uh, bigger problems. He was arrested and charged at Kennedy Airport with trying to smuggle drugs onto his L.A. bound flight last week. <laughs> I think that that's not accurate. I think the guy had two things of coding, uh, non-prescription. I mean, it was like personal use stuff, wasn't it? Really? It doesn't tell me what he... I thought it was pot. It hmm. wasn't? I thought it was uh, coding, but he didn't have a doctor's prescription oh, for it. If you can't take coding on a plane, let me know right now. Hmm. You can't get coding non-prescription. Yeah, so I think he had. Uh, he didn't have a doctor's prescription, so they're saying that he had the illegal substance. But it didn't sound like he was any drug dealer. I think they made it sound on the paper like the dude was yeah, a drug dealer. Yeah, it sounded like he was, you know, using this uh, yeah. to make a living. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, that's what I thought. He was a dealer who made it on the show. I said he's a pretty crummy dealer because judging from the size of his apartment in Manhattan, I said, man, he's not doing too well. <laughs> Actually showed some initiative. Yeah. <laughs> well, trust to get out of that place. He lost trust. He didn't have a big apartment. He just tried to deal a little coding. His line should have been, I'm a drug lord, Tristan. <laughs> also, an update on Paula Poundstone. You want to know how her uh, situation is going? Yeah, uh, Gilbert's a big fan of her. What are you, a lesbo? <laughs> What's uh, with that suit? Did she ever say she's a lesbo? No, she says she's Bert Sugar. <laughs> <laughs> A judge is they easing... They searched Paula Poundstone's victim, <laughs> much like they searched mine, a judge looking is... for little boys in lasagna. <laughs> uh, little boys in Paula Poundstone? Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah. A judge easing the terms of the probation <laughs> the uh, comedian is facing. Uh, he's cutting her psychological counseling sessions from four to two a month. I guess she started wearing a dress. And her AA meetings from three to two a week. 
Got it all under control. <laughs> oh, okay. And her neckties are much more feminine now. <laughs> she had to plead no contest to child endangerment and got her three adopted kids back in December. Hey, Paul, if you lose the zoot suit, you can cut it down to one a week. I think you'll be all right. Yeah, we'll knock off all the meetings. <laughs> We were talking about Phil Spector earlier. He has hired O.J.'s former attorney, Robert Shapiro. Because he's real good at getting off guilty people. <laughs> I mean, doesn't that smack of guilty? I see if a guy hires Robert Shapiro, he's guilty. <laughs> if you need the dream team, you're probably guilty. Right. I plead the fifth. <laughs> you hire okay. them when there's, your blood is on the victim. <laughs> That's right. So uh, they've also called in that Michael Bodden, who's the uh, forensic scientist, to uh, oversee the autopsy that's being conducted on this woman who was found in Spectre's home. Apparently, he just met her on Sunday when he went to the uh, House of Blues out in Los Angeles. She was a waitress there. Uh, nobody who knows Spectre thinks they had any kind of long-term relationship, and nobody is giving any information as to what they think happened in that house. But Shapiro has launched one theory suggesting there might have been someone else in his sprawling estate that night. There you Even go. With a glove. Yeah. With yeah. a glove. Right. It was Mark Furman. Uh, Robert Shapiro says that he's going to try and get the same exact jury they use in the O.J. trial. <laughs> yeah, what's that jury doing? Yeah, those people were terrific. <laughs> Johnny Cochran's working on poems now. That's true. <laughs> Saddam Hussein has uh, given his first interview to a Western journalist in 12 years. And that will be aired on 60 Minutes 2 tonight. Here we can hear a little bit of what Saddam has to say. He really? says that he is not a sponsor of A ten-year-old boy <laughs> was talking to a woman about sex education. <laughs> He says he's not a she sponsor. She got a divorce. All right, yeah. See, what he's is not a sponsor of terrorism, <laughs> but he applauds the work of Al Qaeda. If we had relations with the organization of Al Qaeda, we would not be ashamed to admit it. A 10-year-old boy. Therefore, I would like to tell you. If we are with a 10-year-old boy, in sex, I got an F. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Well, he also says that uh, he is not stockpiling chemical or biological weapons. A you, you know he's not saying it. The interpreter is saying it. <laughs> These really Go saying. I'm going to kill all you bastards. <laughs> Buttons are not as for pills that one can hide in his pockets. And it's easy to work out if Iraq has weapons or does not have weapons. To solve the problems with the oil. It's not polite to ask a woman her age. It's all about her biological weapons. I can rebuild the oil trade center. And put you on a diet. Um, so anyway, the... Uh, um, UN is waiting to be addressed by Colin Powell. He might have even started speaking already. Right. He's to talk to them today to give them to lay out evidence as to why Saddam Hussein is a threat to the entire world. But uh, Richard Armitage, who's a deputy secretary of state, uh, says that uh, one senator wanted to know why so much attention is being given to Iraq over North Korea. B3. Our view, which some question is that we've given over 12 years of time to try to resolve. Uh, he sounds like Mr. Cunningham from Happy Days. <laughs> uh, the situation with Iraq, and we've been... Hey, Patsy! Uh, after finding out about the North hey, Korean... what is it, Mr. C? ...cheating on their 1994 agreement, we've only had a few... Yay, I didn't cheat on my 1994 agreement. <laughs> Chachi did. You hear Colin Powell's opening his uh, speech with a joke? <laughs> a ten-year-old boy. I remember when Joy Adams introduced me. <laughs> yeah, he's going to use that introduction. Saddam Hussein is talking to Barbara Walters. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we will see. Uh, they say he probably won't convince the world of anything because he's not presenting any kind of smoking gun evidence. Uh, he will be showing surveillance photos of what the United States thinks are large caches of uh, biological weapons or plants that produce them. I think I look like Phil Spector. Oh, <laughs> oh get over yourself. Come on. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> just lay out the United States case. Meanwhile, the investigation into the disaster that was the Space Shuttle Columbia continues. Yesterday, there was a memorial service for the family and the workers in the uh, space program. 
Here's June Scobie uh, Rogers, who was the wife of a Challenger commander. Challenger also disappeared from space. She says her husband, Dick Scobie, died aboard Space uh, Shuttle Challenger in 1986, and it's difficult to be at the Johnson Space Center before. It took my breath for a moment uh, because I had so many fond memories of being here, and then uh, just it reminds me quickly that I'm without my soulmate, Dick Scobie, who I love so much. So... She was reminded of what she lost. Meanwhile, they're talking to people. One thing good about Gilbert, he can't lose anything. He has nothing. <laughs> That's right. There's no people in his life. He basically doesn't care. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they've t they're talking to people, and we're hearing now the 911 calls from people who saw the Challenger breaking apart. This caller didn't know what had happened, but felt a vibration and saw the Columbia coming apart in the skies over Texas. B1. We just saw something very strange in the sky, almost directly above Nacogdoches. Uh, almost looks like a plane. Uh, might have blown. Probably like, if it's above in the sky, what do you want me to do about it, buddy? <laughs> but can you up, imagine man. getting this call from this guy with that accent? You go, oh, another kook. Yeah, I'm hanging up. <laughs> well, a lot of times, so 911 won't respond. People sound like they're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> There's something in the sky and need to do something by it. I it think it's like a plane, but yeah. it just fell apart. This uh, caller knew the shuttle Columbia had exploded, but in her grief got the name wrong. B2. I know there's nothing you can do about it. But the challenger was coming in this morning and it blew up. Always comes right in over our driveway out here on 343. Yes, ma'am. And it blew up. I don't know how, but it, it I understand, ma'am. It's supposed to be hurt. Okay, well, that's what we think we heard. Yeah, so she was still calling it Challenger, even though that was Columbia that was blowing up. They are now saying that the path of destruction was a lot wider, and uh, debris started falling to the earth and earlier, and uh, probably over California, and they think that'll be very important to collect that debris to find out more about what happened to that aircraft. Thank God Gilbert's safe. Spacecraft. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, oh, yesterday they uh, announced the final two plants for the World Trade Center, the rebuilding down there. Yes. And I don't quite understand what those things are. I don't think they're pretty. Are they buildings? I thought they were like, like they, they don't even look functional. No, they don't look like people can be in them. One of them looks like a Coca-Cola bottle. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so that's what they were going for. Yeah. Well, I have a plan. <laughs> I want the uh, Royal Play Center to look like Baba Voltage. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not sure what they're, they're planning to spend a lot of money on. They say they're going to be the tallest buildings, tallest buildings in the world, but I don't think people can be in those buildings. No. So uh, just silly looking plans to me. I don't think anybody really wants to be in those buildings. It doesn't matter whether they want to or not. They're going to be. <laughs> if I have anything to say about it. Go there. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I would. We'll see. All right. Put, it, put something up there now. Uh, the cops want to look at this uh, Michael Jackson documentary. <laughs> Good. It's about time. <laughs> I mean, what's everyone doing? The, the, the guy likes to sleep with kids. He's admitting it. He's... That's exactly what caught their attention. These are the prosecutors who were interested in. Uh, Probing the child sex probing abuse. Probing Rick to No, your child <laughs> sex abuse charges, Michael. And uh, they now they, say they... They searched my rectum and found a little cap with a propeller on it. And touch my penis in <laughs> private areas. They say they would like to No listen. one could touch my penis unless they're two years old. <laughs> Do you talk about sleeping with children and uh, Who was sleeping? Boy. I was wide awake. <laughs> a ten-year-old boy... <laughs> Must touch Michael Jackson's penis. <laughs> the head of Barbara District Attorney's Office said it will view. He a got on that. Documentary. For touching his penis. In which Jackson discussed One his time, Joey Adams was touching Michael Sleep Jackson's over. penis. <laughs> the show airs tomorrow and night. He was uh, Michael Jackson. All right, we're going to take a break. Oh, my goodness. We'll slow Gilbert down a little. Yeah, give him a pill. <laughs> Wait, do your song again before. We... <laughs> we'll be back right after these words. <laughs> Oh, there are lots of healthy things we can do with our hands. Sure. Come on, Mr. McFeelick. Can you pound? Pound. Yeah. Pound. Ooh. 
other things we can think of doing with our hands. Some healthy things. I'll probably come to well, one thing is cleaning up. After we've played with something. Every last episode. Is it over yet? Tonight on E stump the buoy. And the guy's sister gets naked. Gilbert Godfrey goes see him at Camden County College in Blackwood, New Jersey. Camden County College. Great football team. February 28th, the tickets go to Ticketmaster.com. On Caroline's. Oh, yes. You forgot Caroline's? I was going to just do one and then do another one later, yeah. but he won't let that happen. <laughs> He's more in Caroline's in tomorrow. tomorrow. Caroline's night. tomorrow night. 757 yes. yeah. area code. Um, All right, be on your guard, Gilbert. The officials who are trying to counter terrorism say that uh, we should be on alert for more and uh, more horrendous attacks than September 11th coming up. They feel that Al Qaeda is awakening sleeper cells throughout the world to do uh, sequenced attacks, you know, not just one, but several, including possibly. Targeting well-known people for assassination. <laughs> Thank God I'm not well-known. <laughs> He's only on Hollywood Square. Yeah. yeah. It's right, Gilbert so maybe, and Martin Mull. Yeah. <laughs> maybe you're safe. <laughs> I'll live forever. How'd you get back on Hollywood Squares? I thought that uh, Henry Winkler, the producer of Hollywood Squares, was kind of like, I, I want to get rid of all the old people. Yeah, this yeah. is H2, not yeah. another one. I, I, I should thank everyone out there. They were all emailing and were writing they? letters. People yeah. wanted you? Yes, believe it or not. There was a groundswell of support. <laughs> Wow. Is and, that what and, Winkler told you? Yeah, and, and they couldn't get Liam Neeson <laughs> sent to square. So you're the hot top. Well, I think you're good on the show. I love him on Hollywood. I think you're much better than Phyllis Diller. <laughs> Where did they dig her? Go ahead, Robin, please. All right, so anyway, uh, if you see anything suspicious, I suppose you should report it because we're expecting lots of attacks. I'll be on the lookout. Anticipation of an attack on Iraq. Uh, Russell Simmons is upset with Pepsi. He says that we should boycott Pepsi for uh, yo, 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 taking yo. <laughs> the endorsement from Ludacris and giving it to squeaky clean Ozzy Osbourne. Well, Ludacris's music is no more dangerous than Ozzy, so he happens to be right, Russell Simmons. That uh, uh, they I have... can't imagine terming Ozzy squeaky clean. He's not clean at all. I think he's uh, joking. He's saying, you know, if you're going to uh, let Ozzy Osbourne in a Pepsi commercial, why is it you can't allow Ludacris? <laughs> Maybe because his name is Ludacris. Maybe because nobody was buying Pepsi because of Ludacris. Yeah. And I nobody know. knows Ludacris. Well, I don't know. I, I don't know. You're right. What about that argument that Ozzy's insanely more famous? Yes. <laughs> no, I think that Ludacris had an endorsement deal taken away from him. Because maybe it wasn't working out for them. No, no, I don't think they ever shot the commercial. I think there was complaints made about his image. Oh, really? See, that's what he's saying. Why is it that Ludacris's image would uh, force you to cancel? What, because he's an outrageous guy and has sexy song lyrics? I mean, so does Ozzy. Yo, Absolutely. Yo, yo, yo. You know. But Ozzy has this image now from his TV show as well as his rock and roll. So maybe Listen, the people who love Ozzy don't know. One of the biggest uh, ironies is, is that they won't give Howard Stern a commercial, but uh, Gilbert Godfrey gets one. <laughs> At least Ludacris had one taken away. And Gilbert Godfrey uses the C word in front of young children. <laughs> I've seen it myself. I go to schoolyards. Right. And you so, yell out there. Yes. It's the guy who exposes himself to people. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, we are wondering what is going on with court. Courtney Love, she was arrested when her plane landed in London the other day for cursing at a flight attendant because they wouldn't let her personal nurse into business class when she was flying economy. Why she need a personal nurse? She's a young woman. They didn't say why she was traveling with a private nurse, but... Because she's crazy? She didn't yeah. have one. When you have a personal nurse, that's a big yeah. problem. Personal nurse. <laughs> yeah, I've heard of like a bodyguard, a personal nurse. My own nurse. In fact, the nurse is trying to cover her face when the photographers were taking pictures. Did you see that? Yeah, she didn't want to be seen with Courtney with her outrage. I mean, she's trying to cover Courtney's face. I guess that's what a personal nurse does. Well, Courtney's excuse is, yeah, I cussed at the lady, but my daughter says I have a potty mouth. And you know what I'm thinking of doing? I'm thinking of hiring a nurse. How much would that cost me a year? <laughs> Twenty grand. I mean, I would like that. Not much. Would you buy her a business class seat? Yes, <laughs> and treat her well, but I wouldn't mind traveling with a nurse. And she'll hold on to the drugs. Will they wipe <laughs> yeah. you? Right. 
I want to wipe myself yeah, anymore. Yeah. You know, usually... <laughs> I'm a, too big a star. A person with a private nurse is about 100 years old. Yeah, that, that's very odd. So personal I don't know what nurse. He's up to. She was pissed the personal nurse couldn't visit her up in uh, business class. And why did your nurse need to visit you during the flight? Aren't the flight attendants taking care of you? You're an enema. Cook. <laughs> an emergency enema. <laughs> Where's my nurse? Come on. <laughs> um, Colin Farrell, who's now a big star. He's in the movie The Recruit, which was number one at the box office this past weekend. Yeah, he's a year away from Hollywood Square. <laughs> Colin. See Gilbert sticking his head into <laughs> Collins Square. Uh, I can't wait. Hi. Maybe that's Colin Farrell to block, please. Colin. <laughs> Maybe that's why Gilbert's wearing his new hairdo. It has to be Colin Farrell. Gary, tell Tom I can't meet with him today. I'll call him on the phone and I promise I'll call him. He wants to get a hold of me. I've just talked for four and a half hours and I'm very tired. <laughs> Colin does not want to really, he doesn't want to live in Los Angeles Ever, and he explains why. A3. Oh, great. Because I don't get any work here. <laughs> oh, I know. There's too many weird people for him. Yeah. It's not real enough. The circus that I travel in, you know, it's it, it's very much Hollywood. Uh, <laughs> yeah. stuff He's like a normal that. guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but, um, but so, I, I, I have no intention... They to took me lucky in. charms! <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to hear what he's saying, why he can't live in Hollywood. The movie town, it's Hollywood, you know, and I'm, I happen to be an actor who's had, had a lot of success, thank God. Uh... So I'm going to be treated a certain way, and I'm going to uh, my path is going to be greased, and life's going to be made very easy for me, and that's all well and good. And I come into town for three months, indulge a little bit, and, and the best thing for me to do is get the f home to where my family and friends are, you know? Oh, I see, because it'll, it'll ruin him. He's been him. treated too well. Yeah. Read between the lines. Yeah. Too many darkies. <laughs> <laughs> is that what you think he's saying? It's a little dark here. <laughs> Did you know the niggers in, in Hollywood? I could do it out them, you know. Who needs, the, <laughs> who needs the collars? I don't want them coons following me around. <laughs> you know, you know, you know. Candace Bergen, uh, <laughs> who showed up this year. She's not a nigger, is she? <laughs> Alabama, <laughs> along with Reese Witherspoon. Here, that is now on DVD. You can get that in your local video store. Not the speed saw that movie, didn't they? <laughs> Candace Bergen on the difficult scene for her in Sweet Home Alabama. It's A difficult when them jungle bunnies are moving in Taylor. <laughs> For instance, the scene where Andy yelled at Reese, it's not so easy to call, you know, America's sweetheart um, an ungrateful little bitch. I just tried not to back off of it. I don't care about Candace Bergen. I don't even think she's a good actress. Yeah, really. When was she ever an actress? Oh, come on. She's been on a lot of movies. She's been in movies. That doesn't mean she's an actress. Well, I'm saying I don't think she's a good actress. You think she's an actress. Oh, she might think it. And Karen you, Culkin. You, you don't think uh, Murphy Brown was extraordinary? <laughs> no. Witty and edgy. I think she was a very pretty girl. Yeah. I don't think she was that hot. She was flat. She needed yeah. implants. Well, now people would argue. And with she has you, like yeah. a lot of lines in her neck. <laughs> it's like veiny. It's like a bird. <laughs> it's That's... better than having corns in your neck. Oh, stop. <laughs> she was very pretty. In What's wrong with you? <laughs> Damn it, Colin. Come on. <laughs> Karen Culkin, a kid. Who's who... talking, a nigger? <laughs> oh, What's the matter with you? Yeah, Are you crazy? Nigger, nigger, nigger. You everything with the N word. What's the matter with you? You're racist. I can't Carl. help it, Colin Farrell. Why are you saying that word? Yeah. It's a terrible word. <laughs> You know, once I guess enough. it's those damn Irish. <laughs> well, I know you're trying to do an Irish impression and, yes, and disparage Colin Farrell, but it's <laughs> enough already. <laughs> Point taken. Right. Karen oh. Culkin, who is a young man who Michael Jackson says he slept with, <laughs> was that <laughs> he could explain his film that is now on DVD, Igby Goes Down, A2. Oh, my God. How can you interview Kieran Culkin and not just say, what did you do in bed with Michael Jackson? Who cares about anything else? Absolutely. To see how the world around his father kind of crushed him, or at least through his eyes. Oh, oh Kieran. Structure. That, that, that's very nice, but what color penis does Michael Jackson have? So he be kind of sees... Did he bleach his, his testicles? His and sees that, that that's going to happen. Did he touch you? Yes. Now, his testicles are the dark light. Could you please fill us in on this? <laughs> Anything else, Robin? That's what's happening. Well, what a pleasure to have Gilbert Gottfried here, really. Yeah. Even when he becomes a little racist. <laughs>
Well, it's that damn Colin Farrell. Yeah, what's, yeah. With, what's with that Colin Farrell? Yeah. I know he's trying to be funny, but yeah. he appeared to be very racist in his humor. Yes. Yes. Yeah. See Gilbert Godfrey tomorrow night at Caroline's in Manhattan for ticket I reservations. I wonder if he'll be doing that at Caroline's. Not if there's any black people in the audience. 212 757 4100. Gilbert will be at the Camden County College in Blackwood, New Jersey. Here's my impression of Colin Farrell at the game. <laughs> And go see him February 28th at the college, <laughs> Ticketmaster.com. At Camden College, Gilbert's considered a professor. <laughs> this is Colin Farrell at a rap concert. <laughs> well, we'll see you tomorrow. We have a big day. By the way, if there are any girls who want to have hot lesbian sex with Tabitha Stevens, we can set that up. We're going to do a dating game with her. I'm not kidding, for real. 1-800-44-STERN. If you're one of the three women we select, you can have hot lesbian sex. Or if you'd like to have gay sex with Colin Farrell. <laughs> if you're white, the number is... 1-800-44-STERN is the number to call for Tabitha Stevens. I don't know where you call for Colin Farrell. You uh, didn't call anywhere for that. All right, we'll uh, see you, blah, blah, blah. Okay.